welcome to this week's video. Now, coming up in this week's video, a Strat without an EQ pedal. And a Les Paul without an EQ pedal. A 335 without an EQ, oh, is it with an EQ? Uh, whatever. And no, I'm not gonna do any more coming up in this video because I've confused myself. What this video is about, as you've probably seen from the title, is the fact that I've just put an EQ pedal on my pedal board. My EQ pedal is here. It's one of these Boss G7. Now, stick with me. I know some of you may have been pointed towards this video because you've watched some of my non-guitar nerdy videos about the Eagles or about my gig diaries and things like this. But this video is an unashamedly guitar nerdy video. So, but stick with it anyway, it might be interesting. I'm gonna show you some guitar solos and there's gonna be some music on it. So it's not all gonna be complete, utter nerdery. But we are talking about guitar pedals and EQs, which is pretty boring and nerdy probably, unless you play the guitar. So in all my years of playing the guitar, I never really occurred to me to use an EQ pedal on my pedal board. I mean, you've got EQ on the amp, there's my amp that I've used most of the time now. I've got treble middle bass on there, I've got a tone control on the guitar. Why would I need to use an EQ pedal? I've always thought to myself, even though I've watched people like Tom Bukovac and he, he does some pretty extreme things. He has it on the, his board in the studio all the time. He'll have one of these on, I think, on all of his pedal boards pretty much, certainly in the studio, because he can just get sounds, he can boost frequencies or take frequencies out as he needs to. But I still thought to myself, live, I'm not gonna need one of these. Now, as I'll show you in a minute, I have many drive pedals, and one of the longest standing ones is this Keeley Modified, let's see, Keeley Modified, um, Tube Screamer, which, as you can see, is well gigged and duffed up. Um, it's It hasn't been working for me since I started using Gibsons, which I didn't ever use for a long time. I used to use this. I'll explain all this in a minute when I show you the pedal board. But basically, this isn't really working for me properly. So I had a space on my pedal board, which again, I'll show you. And I thought, do you know what? I'm going to stick this graphic equalizer pedal on. Now, I've got one of these because I had this on my acoustic guitar pedal board until I started using my Cog Cortex for everything on the acoustic guitar. And I, I do looping and stuff, and I needed a nice clean boost for solos. So I got one of these because I could boost certain frequencies, and it was a great boost for acoustic guitar, but never crossed my mind to use it on electric. So before my gig, a couple of days ago, I thought I'm going to put this in place of the Tube Screamer. And I was so worried about it, I worked out ways I could bypass it and things like that. But it turned out to be absolutely brilliant. I wish I'd done it years ago. It's giving me a clean boost with the ability to kind of nudge other frequencies. And I'm not using this to its full potential in this video. I might do another video and I've spent a bit longer exploring with it. Things like dropping some frequencies out to get a more funky single coily sound if I'm using a humbuck or something like that. But this video, I'm just concentrating how I've used it to boost the signal and boost my amp and get a sort of driven sound that I'm after. Because I was talking to someone about this the other day, you can't have one amp that you can take anywhere with what I do because I'm playing at different volumes all the time. Um, sometimes I need to be very loud. So if I had a really small amp, I'd be stuck because it's not loud enough. Other places have got to be very quiet, so that amp would be perfect, but I can't carry around a whole array of amps from quiet to loud. So I've got this one, which is a clean platform, and then I get the amount of boost I want from the pedal, so I can get this pretty quiet, and it will go very loud. So without further ado, I'm gonna show you some of the sounds I've been getting before I put this on the board. Firstly, with the Strat, and I'm really pleased with this. This is a kind of, it's a pedal steel mini, it's called, it's a Milkman, and it's a very clean sound, and you still retain that sort of clarity and that chiminess to my ears, particularly with the Strat, because it's less of an output, even through my blues driver and my Klon pedals. So just have a listen to this. This is my Strat, playing one of my original songs.
So hopefully you can hear it on there. I've got other recordings, but I haven't got video to go with it that you can really hear that sort of chiminess. It's nice. What I'm struggling with at the moment, I'm going to show you a Les Paul sound. It, I'm still like the sound, but I'm. It's it's a bit more fuzzy with the Les Paul because it's got all the, all the three three five because it's got so much more output. It breaks up a little bit too much, more than I like. I, I don't want it. I just want a sort of edge of breakup. So have a listen to this. This is my uh, on the same gig, but playing the Les Paul. So I think the next thing to do is give you a little tour of my pedal board. Then what I'm going to tell you I've done probably will make more sense. Here's my pedal board in the cold light of day, which is always embarrassing because when I look at it in the cold light of day, I notice, oh, I mean, look how disgusting it is. I mean, it must be beer with dust adhered to it. Anyway, originally, well, for years now, the longest standing things on my pedal board, I... That blues driver and this I haven't moved actually, or the tuner probably. And I did have a compressor here until recently, the Keeley compressor, and I swapped it out for that because I was looking for something else. And this has lived here since I got the pedal board, same as that one. And quite often I would use that and that together, and I would have them both set. This is with the Strat because I mean I've only recently got Gibson style guitars, but oh. That might explain some of the problem I've been having. <laughs> uh, so I'd have it set like that. I've got this sort of... Tri oh, that's off as well. Look at that. It all gets knocked. That's absolutely disgusting. Anyway, that's how I'd have it with the strap. But for some reason, it just doesn't seem to be working properly anymore. I mean, with the tube screamer. That's not going to help. I'm going to sort that out. When I put the tube screamer at home and I put it in front of one of my amps, it sounds fine. But on a gig, for some reason, I have to whack the level right up to get anything out of it. And this drive... I, d I don't know, it just seems to go too fuzzy. And on its own, it sounds like I can hear too much of the dry signal going on with the distorted signal. Something weird happening with it. Anyway, I will sort that out. But I wonder if it might be because I've got all these other nonsense here, which I never used to have. So this is this EP booster. This is a kind of clean boost. This is um, mimicking the Echoplex um, preamp which Jimmy Page apparently used. A lot of people used to just plug through it, even if they weren't using the echo, because it sounded good. And it does sound good, and I basically leave that on the entire time. So it's boosting the signal already. So that might be why then I turn that on, and then when I've got this on as well, it doesn't seem to work. I, I think there might be something wrong with that. I'm not sure. Anyway, so I bought this Clon to replace that. But I did. I put the Clon instead of the compressor, because I wasn't using the compressor very much. Plus, I've got this other drive pedal, which has got the steel string Singer clean kind of eq thing which compresses so that's quite a nice compressor for using for sort of funk stuff which i don't use that often to be honest um anyway so i've got the the sound i have been getting for most of the time and those early clips i showed you at the beginning of the video is the blue driver and the clone on together so i i'm tending to have the level you know as to what i need and then particularly with the humbucker the drive is right down here because i don't want a squawky overdriven sound i'm just trying to make it sound like a driven amp at any volume because i can't just you know these days you just can't drive an amp um properly in venues because they you know they want it quiet which is understandable i suppose um and then i would have it going into the archer which again i'm having the output you know set add to taste you know not seasoning but the the drive now that's probably more add to taste that's add to the level you want it to be but then the drive very little drive and the treble just slightly boosted which has given me a nice fat sound this on its own with the humbuckers it sounds too fizzy i think it's a very transparent drive it doesn't change i'm going to do another video on that but that not being transparent everyone says that is but that's not as transparent as this and i'm going to um so i, I come out of that 
into that and so i get that goes a bit fizzy as soon as i put that on it see d fizzes it and that's a nice sound together this was i wasn't using so let's get rid of that so i put this graphic on and i was to the point where i was so worried that i'd worked out how i could bypass this pedal and i could go from here um but that would reach to there if I wanted to bypass it completely because it's not true bypass, like everything is on here except that. And I thought oh, I might lose signal or something, but as soon as I turned it on, and I'll show you on the video in a sec, it just sounded fantastic. It it kind of does what the Klon does, um, boosts it and takes away the sort of fizziness of that. But it's a, it is clean, it's not adding any drive at all. And I just bumped the middle slightly, that's that's literally just above there and these are just above these frequencies here um the four and eight hundred up a little bit the 1.6 and that just gave it a little mid boost and it sounded great i was really really pleased with it um so yeah we are there we are there that's the uh pedal board the other drive pedals i've got is the sl drive which is the marshall thing which i think no, I wasn't using that, I don't think, with the Les Paul. I tend to use that with the Les Paul, or if I've got my Van Halen guitar, I'll use that and then back off the volume to clean it up on the guitar. And this is my Steel String Singer, which I just showed you, which I haven't been using, actually, because I've just been fiddling around with these to try and get the drive sound I'm after. So there we are, that's the pedal board tour. And I'm going to show you some clips now of what I did. Now, this first clip, it, playing Valerie, it's a regular gig. If you've watched my channel before, you've seen me playing the solo with this band many times. But what I did, I hit the blues driver on which when it's on its own using les paul or the 335 to me it's it's a bit too fizzy even though i turn the drive right down and that's why in the past i've been putting the clon after it which gives you that little mid boost but sometimes it's still too much drive and what i've been craving is a way of just nudging the level up after the pedal maybe so i'm not putting any more drive into the pedal to give me more level with less drive and that's exactly what this seems to do and as i showed you on that video i've just slightly bumped the the middle which it probably could have done it would have done the same thing without bumping the middle but it just fattened it up slightly and just touched the volume gain above these are meant to be noisy you can buy a modification for these to replace some of the chips to make it noisy but i didn't notice it being noisy so i don't need to bother with that because i'm not boosting it but by very much to make it all noisy so check this first clip you can hear at the beginning it's quiet and it sounds quite fizzy then i hit this on i think i turn it it's on at the beginning then i'll turn it off and back on again so you can hear because while i was doing that i was thinking oh i'm going to do a video on this so if you just want to listen to the beginning of this this is valerie this solo <laughs> So I hope you can hear the difference between that and the Les Paul in the clip earlier. The, you know, I seem to get that transient, the front of the note seems to be purer because this is driving the amp 
rather than driving into the pedal or I'm not going into another drive pedal so I'm adding another level of drive which the more drive you get it makes the front of the note sort of fuzzier whereas this seems to be retaining that nice attack on the note. So I'm going to show you another solo this was sign sealed delivered and I'm going to show you this one it's slightly different because I put the wah wah pedal on and did some stupid fast nonsense so I'm going to show you this solo. <laughs> pretty much the end of the video I hope you enjoyed it and hope you can hear what difference this makes between having this and two drive pedals on at the same time I can't believe I didn't think of using this before this is a, uh, a revelation to me I might do some more videos when I've found out some more uses of this because this is going to stay on my pedal board now for quite some time if not indefinitely but I bring out new videos every week they're not all guitar nerdy ones like this if you've made it to the end and you're not a guitar nerd um, I do videos and all kinds of things, but they come out 7pm UK time on a Friday, so uh, please hit like, hit subscribe and tune in next week if you so desire. And I'm going to leave you with one more video. This is, uh, what's that song called? <laughs> Fleetwood Mac. Everywhere. <laughs> Shouldn't know the language, shouldn't I? Uh, solo I did in that. I think with this one I might have had the Clon and the Blues Driver and a kick this on. Not sure. Have a listen, see what you think. It's quite pleased with this solo. So have a listen and I hope to see you next week.